Mm -hmm. I'm Dan Johnson talking to Robert Hellman. He's the man behind UL Power. You already know about the engine, but I know something that you may not know. What am I talking about, Robert? It's this thing called ASTM. ASTM. Don't ask me what it is, <laughs> but Dan knows. <laughs> it's an approval process that all special light sport aircraft have to meet, and the engines, and floats, and props, and all kinds of parts. But for a long time, you've been selling only to the experimental aircraft community, uh, the kit builder community, and you've been tightly associated with Zenith, but you supply all kinds of aircraft from what I can see. But they've all been kit built so far, have they not? Yeah, they've all been amateur uh, kit in the United States. We've tried, we've done some things in some other countries, but it, it wasn't through ASTM. Different countries have different requirements. But sure. basically in the U.S., the engine, anything that goes in an SLSA has to be meet the ASTM standard and then we tell the airplane company yes our engines meet the ASTM standard and this engine itself right here is our new 220 horsepower engine the factory in Belgium used this engine as the first one to comply it so it is built to the ASTM standard and we can sell an engine with our dual ECU system that meets the, the, the ASTM standard basically so now we're going to take all the work they did on this project and apply it to all of our engines from ah, 97 okay, horsepower okay. on up. Okay, so the ones that would work in an SLSA but had not been used in them yet because you lack this thing, now can look forward to maybe going, hey, UL Power is here. So I've talked, I just do uh, the United States, but I've talked, we have just a handful of SLSA airplanes that are actually manufactured in the U.S., but I've gone to a couple of them, and they're very excited because now most, uh, probably all SLSAs are 100 horsepower because that's the biggest engine that was ASTM. So we've got one manufacturer specifically who's really gaining momentum in the marketplace that is really interested in using our 130 horsepower engine because it totally changes the performance of the plane. Our 130 horsepower engine is about the same weight as most 100 horsepower engines that have a gearbox is that right? because of the weight. Yeah, they're within pounds one way or the other, but we have a lot more horsepower and a ton wow. more torque. 30 more horsepower for essentially the same weight is a, yeah. a pretty fantastic gain. Yeah. So we can we can either put more horsepower in the same plane or we can put the same horsepower and the plane loses weight. We call that the U-All Power Diet. The plane <laughs> loses weight. Ray, as an example, Ray, I don't know if you can see him in the picture. My partner is oh, back yeah, here. He shows. He, uh, Ray, Ray. There you go. Ray took a 160 horsepower engine off of his RV4 with a constant speed prop, put on a constant speed prop and 200 horsepower, and he lost 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. I mean, wow, that's a lot of extra horsepower. How's but, the but, airplane fly with but, all that? But wait, no, that wasn't enough. Oh, that wasn't enough. That wasn't There's enough. More, now folks. he took off his 200 horsepower engine, normally aspirated, and he's got this 220 horsepower turbocharged engine on his RV4. So I tell people he's now taxiing at V&E. <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell a little bit of humor resides. Here too. <laughs> but yeah, you can. Uh, our first customer in the U.S. with this engine is a twin velocity, and they had 160 horsepower normally aspirated on each side. So they've gone from 320 horsepower on takeoff to 440. <laughs> but wait, it gets better. With the decrease, you lose 3% of your horsepower every 1,000 feet with normally aspirated. Uh, yeah. So 260 horsepower engines at 15,000 feet is about 100 horsepower total. Yeah. So now they have 440 horsepower at 15,000 feet. Altitude. Yep. Yes. Wow. They're well, trying to figure great. out. They're trying to figure out how to pressurize the plane. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't doubt that's coming next. That's another whole yeah. work effort but, but, in and of itself. But ASTM, to the extent I understand it is both it's a it's a technical standard that the engine has to meet and then it's like a business quality standard where you have to have traceability and such best practices and, and so all the rest of that yeah so it, yes. so a lot of the parts on this engine are the exact same parts that are on the okay. smaller engines and they're coming from the same vendors and for a long time the the engine with our dual ecu option met technically met the standard for flying we just didn't have all the traceability and stuff in place i see I saw well ul power is actually comprised of three different companies oh, okay. plus a fourth individual that just invested so it's dr tuning was the engine company that designed the race car engines years ago okay. so they design and build the engines and then two of the other owners one is the aluminum guy ah. and the other is the steel guy <laughs> and when i say guy the steel guy is a big company they machine a lot of parts for caterpillar in europe oh, and wow. ferrari and others so they're very famous in in belgium and europe and then just a couple of years ago you all power itself the legal entity got a building and bought a robot so they're machine actually machining all the aluminum now is that right and so they can leave work at night and come back the next morning and there's enough aluminum for two engines so now any comp airplane company in the world 
can build a plane to the ASTM standard, test it fly is it an there, international standard, test yes, it right. there, fly it for five hours, so then it can come to the U.S. and fly here with you all power on it because the FAA recognizes the bilaterals, right. and then Ray and I can maintain that engine and sell them parts and such. So there's Perfect. all of our <laughs> engines are direct drive, air cooled. Dual electronic ignition, multi-point fuel injection, which means there's an injector at each cylinder, so the EGT, CHTs are smooth straight across. The starter is up here, the alternator is back here, so it's very complete. All of our engines ship with an exhaust and a muffler. Uh, it's a electric fuel pumps mount on the firewall, and then there's a bunch of sensors on the engine. Here's the air temperature ah, okay. sensor, for instance. That data goes to the ECU in the cockpit. It's like in a car. It's a little small box. Data goes to it based on that data. It sends information or direction back and tells the injectors when to open and close, tells the spark plugs when to fire, when, uh, so, and it can change that. So at startup- Like at altitude, for example. Well, from startup to shutdown. At startup, it knows if the engine's cold or hot, so it can change the, the mixture and the timing. It knows the air pressure, so it knows if it needs to lean it. Ah. So it's controlling the timing and the fuel. And so in the cockpit, there's no primer, no choke, no carburetor heat, no mixture, just a throttle. In the pattern, your eyes can be outside. You're not messing with carburetor heat, no mixture, Amen. just the throttle, so you can watch what you're doing. That's great stuff. That this is our 118 horsepower engine. Okay. And basically, what it is we have four four cylinder engines. This is the wider one, but basically, this uh, polished piece of aluminum here. Uh -huh. If you take that out and squash the engine, we have a narrow stroke, 2.6 liter. Is that right? And just then that this one is, change changes just, yep. the engine. And then this is three and a half liters. And for each engine, we have we change the piston and we take the compression from 8.0 to 8.7 to one. And so we go from the narrow four cylinder is 97 horsepower. The wide four is 100. This is the uh, wi uh, low compression wide four cylinder. It's 118 horsepower, and then the bigger one is 130 horsepower. Okay, all the, uh, all those numbers are based on this basic exactly. configuration yeah. that I see here. For the change to go from the two 2.6 liter engine to three and a half, it's different cylinders, different connecting rods, but everything else is the same. Okay. A oh, different crankshaft, and then and, and then we have a narrow six low and high compression. And then the one we're looking at is the wide six, low and high compression. Then we took the low compression six and put the turbocharger on it. Another thing that's critical is when we first designed these engines, we were, we were copying other engine per, per, uh, specs, basically. So we targeted 3,300 as the RPM. And we've learned that it's really not a good number for propellers. So on the new turbocharger engine or any other new engines, we're targeting 2,700 RPM. So the 200 horsepower is at 2,700 RPM, whereas this is 118 horsepower, but it's at 3,300 RPM. So you have to discount it a little bit for 2,800 RPM on takeoff. So you're also air-cooled. Direct drive air-cooled. So no and because the heads form. are machined instead of cast, and they're aluminum, they, they're thinner and they're longer, so there's a lot of surface area. Yeah. So we got a lot of heat exchange. But we actually have oil-cooled heads. This oil, oil line, this oil line here oh. comes in. It's lubricating the rockers, but it's also spraying oils directly on the valve stems to cool the valves. And because the fuel is here, this is called batch injection. Batch All the injectors injection, open at the huh? same time in a batch. So the fuel, when it comes in, it's hanging out right here until the intake valve opens. So the fuel's cooling the head. Oh, I see. We, we really recommend the oil cooler up front underneath the spinner. It's, it's the best place. Well, that's why they need to talk to somebody who's expert about it. So how do they, we've asked you a lot of questions now. Thank you for all those answers. But how do they find you on the web for more questions or, or file war, file war, <laughs> firewall <laughs> forward kits? Yeah, but just Google you all power and you'll see youallpower.com is our website. Very good. And if you, like, if you like Facebook, I live in Facebook. I'm homeless, but I live on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of good stuff there to keep up with. What's the Facebook address? Or you, uh, Facebook, just search for You All Power, and we actually have multiple groups. We've got some that are How just for owners. How do we find yours, then? You just go in Facebook, just search for You All Power, you and all you'll power. see all of them, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, you can get them all in. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, a lot of uh, good stuff there. Thank you, Robert. And uh, I've had coverage on You All Power flowing behind it a little bit, too, and uh, lots of other things in the affordable aviation range. You can find all that on ByDanJohnson.com. And thanks for joining Robert Helms and myself here at Sun and Fun 2021 to learn about the new ASTM approval on the UL Power Engine. We'll see you at Oshkosh.